Don Lamont's accuser is publicly detailing his sexual assault allegations, and let's just say Lamont ain't too happy about that. We're going to look at the accusations of sexual misconduct against the CNN anchor. We're going to see how it's making its way to court as we speak, and stick with me to the very end of this video, and we'll find out how these accusations against Lamont are just par for the course for CNN contributors. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Stevie with you. Great to be with you. As always, I am your daily fake news antidote. As each and every day, I provide patriotic analysis to help you think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, we have officially sold out of general admission tickets to this weekend's Patriot Live virtual event on the 12th and 13th. But we got several duplicate spots we're making available. But again, there are only a few. So if you want to hang out online this weekend with Senator Doug Mastriano and other amazing patriots, you got to hurry. We're literally trying to squeeze in as many of you as we possibly can. So don't wait another second. Click on that link below and register for this amazing online conference that's going to show you how to fight for faith, family, and freedom like never before. And I cannot wait to see you there. Actually, it's tomorrow. My time flies. All right, let's dive right in here, gang. What can I say? It just keeps getting worse and worse for the clown news network, CNN. Don Lemon is facing a lawsuit over allegations of sexual assault by a New York bartender. Lemon's accuser is a man by the name of Dustin Heiss, and he is claiming that back in the summer 2018, Lamont assaulted him at Merce Backstreet Tavern in the Hamptons. Apparently, the bartender recognized Lamont and offered to buy him a drink. And the drink he offered was a lemon drop, which is just a vodka cocktail. And so I guess Lamont got insulted by that. And so this guy's claiming that Lamont responded by putting his hand down the guy's pants and rubbed up against him sexually and then repeatedly shoved his fingers in his face and began hurling some pretty vulgar things at this bartender. Not the, the, well. So these are obviously very detailed allegations and accusations. Now, Lamont, of course, is denying this, and CNN is, of course, sticking by their valiant anchor who nobody watches anymore. Now, Heist detailed the assault on a recent episode of the Megyn Kelly show, and apparently, when Lamont's lawyers got wind of that, they sent Kelly a bizarre legal letter putting her on notice with regard to the interview that she had knowingly provided a platform for misinformation to be spread to the public about Don Lamont, allowing Heist to make, quote, false and misleading statements about Lamont that were, quote, unchallenged, which is so ironic if you think it through, since that's precisely what CNN does every single night. The letter went on to accuse Kelly, quote, for years, you have made public statements on social media to the press and on your show, recklessly accusing Mr. Lamont of being biased, of lying to viewers, and of treating his guests unfairly. Although you advertise your podcast as featuring honest conversations without BS or agenda, your podcast today, in which you interview Dustin Heiss, reveals that you only pay lip service to journalistic ethics. And the legal letter went on to accuse Kelly of having a vendetta against Lamont. It's all incredibly bizarre. For his part, Heist, the accuser, is claiming that he was offered a half a million dollars to drop the charges and walk away, which he told Kelly he rejected because he believed that what Lamont did was part of a wider pattern of behavior. Quote, anybody that acts like that in public without any fear of what it might do to somebody or the consequences it might have, that's a pattern. And then Kelly asked him if he thought Lamont had done something like this before. And he said, quote, I wouldn't be surprised he's protected by the fact that he's an African-American gay man and television on television. And I'm just some nobody. Now, to me, that was a very interesting response. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in this crazy story, because in the end, while it certainly involves many other factors and variables yet to be corroborated for short, Nonetheless, this is a story about a common bartender, as it were, versus a member of our ruling elite. It's a story about one of the people, an average everyday citizen, allegedly being abused by a member of our privileged class, the very same class that's right now as we speak persecuting Kyle Rittenhouse, 
The very same class that mocks and ridicules and derogates patriots as insurrectionists and white supremacists on a daily basis. I've even heard one leftist go so far as to call anti-vaxxers bioterrorists. And so what this story is turning into more and more is another example of a member of the people rising up against the alleged abuses of the privileged class and fighting back. And that's why this accuser purportedly turned his back on the half million dollar offer. And so now, despite all the hyperbole and dismissiveness coming from Lamont's legal team, <laughs> these sexual assault allegations are indeed making their way into court. Fox News is reporting that after a lengthy discovery process, Heise's legal team said that the suit was going forward and may wind up in court around January 2022, just a couple of months from now. Now, needless to say, this sexual assault allegation is not the only issue that CNN has had to deal with uh, with regards, shall we say, with inappropriate behavior among their anchors and contributors. I'm sure you all recall how their other fanboy anchor, Chris Cuomo, was openly accused of sexual harassment with his very own email used as evidence against him just a couple of months back. In a bombshell piece published by the New York Times, Cuomo's former boss, executive producer Shelley Ross, outlined an incident where Cuomo met her at a bar and hugged her tightly, squeezing her butt in full view of her husband back in 2005, of course, without her permission. She also produced an email that shows that Cuomo apologized first to her husband for what he did and then to her. In other words, it appeared that Cuomo apologized only because he realized he got caught and then he proceeded, being the lawyer that he is, he proceeded to draw distinctions between what he did and what others like Christian Slater, who actually got arrested for doing the very same thing, for squeezing the butt of a woman without her permission and was charged with third degree sexual abuse. Cuomo clearly recognized that he could be brought up on charges and he preemptively sent out an email to Shelley Ross to try to placate the situation. And so Cuomo, of course, had to admit he did precisely that, but that he apologized and he thought they were all good, right? And then, of course, my personal favorite CNN legal analyst and renowned, that's how CNN billed him, the renowned reporter for The New Yorker, the ultra left wing Jeffrey Tubin, had to be temporarily suspended after he was caught exposing himself during a Zoom call with a number of his New Yorker colleagues, many of whom were women. <laughs> Apparently, Tubin believed that the camera feed was turned off on his computer, which is a bit odd since you could see on the screen precisely what everyone else sees. So I'm not sure what he was quite up to. However, as it turns out, it was much worse than that. We do know what he was up to. He was not merely exposing himself. He was also, shall we say, gratifying himself. So he got temporarily suspended from CNN and now he's back and he's back in good company. And just to underscore the kind of person this guy Tubin is, just the other day, I kid you not, just the other day, actually, this guy actually commented that it's, quote, good news for Kyle Rittenhouse that he's not on trial for being an idiot. He actually said that. This guy, Tubin, actually said that. So all of this is to say that the privileged world of CNN continues to break apart in terms of any semblance of their credibility. We'll obviously see what happens with Lamont, but regardless of this case's outcome, the accusations are but another reason why tens of millions across the country now regard CNN as simply the most distrusted name in fake news. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out uh, a video I did a couple of years ago on a shock poll of how young people are actually growing less tolerant of LGBTs, it's absolutely fascinating, very pertinent to some of the latest polls that have been coming out as of this week. So make sure to click on the link and I will see you over there. God bless.